indicado no representa la opinión de J&B Communications Inc., de sus directores o empleados. Assalamu alaikum, this is your host Rashid Mahdi and welcome to another episode of Islam for Mankind. We are honored to have with us Imam, uh, Imam Abdul Azim. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, thank you for uh, for uh, coming. And also we have our uh, co-host and translator, Dr. Jesus Marti. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Jesus. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear brother, and to all our radio audience and your imam. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, we shall continue with the, with the prophets and the messengers and their message and their job for humanity. So, uh, Imam, if you would like to start, Zakallah. Okay, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon our listeners. Um, the topic that we're going to continue with today is the job of the prophets and messengers. Uh, if you recall, last week we mentioned three of the jobs and responsibilities of the prophets. We said that their first job was to deliver the message, as would be understood from the name messenger, deliver the message as clear and as correctly as possible. Their second job, we said, was to call the people to Allah, call the people to the religion of Islam, the religion of Allah. And the third job that we mentioned last week was that they're supposed to give glad tidings to those that, you know, that follow the straight path and also warn those that are not on the straight path. Today, inshallah, we're going to continue with the other jobs, inshallah. Okay, now they say, uh, Imam, and the... Uh, el tema que estamos discutiendo en el día de hoy es cuál es el trabajo y las responsabilidades de los profetas y mensajeros, que es la misión y responsabilidad asignada a dichos profetas. En el programa anterior habíamos visto de que en primer lugar era la comunicación del santo mensaje de ese Padre amado. Eh, en segundo lugar, llamar a la gente a la religión de Dios, que como Dios solicitó que se hiciera y adorarle como éste ha determinado que se haga, hermanos. El y el, la, la tercera es el una, una vez habiendo invitados a, a la religión practicar el islam que es el monoteísmo puro What, what's the, which one is the, the third uh, third one was giving glad tidings and warnings okay la, la otra la tercera es darle también buenas nuevas al okay aquí lo tengo darle eh, también eh, buenas nuevas y advertencias de que tiene que haber un balance tiene que eliminarse o sea tiene que dejarse eh, la vida de placer eh, terrenal porque tiene que ser una vida de complacencia y de sumisión a la voluntad de Dios uh, Imam Yusaku Walahu Haram So the fourth responsibility of these prophets and the messengers is that they are supposed to reform and purify the souls of people Reform and purify their souls. Uh, what does this mean? We know that as, as human beings, we created out of. We have two main uh, components that you know that constitutes uh, constitutes a human being, someone that's alive. The body and the soul. There's the body and the soul. So just like we need food and we need water and so on, uh, nourishment in order for us to live, for the body to live, then the soul also needs education, it needs spirituality, it needs guidance in order for the soul to be pure and for it to be happy. So the fourth responsibility, as we mentioned again, is to reform the souls of human beings, to purify their souls. And this is very made, this is made very clearly in the verse in Surah number 42, verse 52. Surah number 42, verse 52. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, and this verse says, And thus we have sent you, O Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu we have sent you a ruh, meaning a revelation. So the revelation is considered to be is translated as the word ruh and as a mercy a mercy by our command you knew not what the book was meaning he's tell Allah is telling the Prophet that you had no idea what you know what the revelation was about nor did you know what faith was but we made this Quran we made this Quran a light by which 
we can guide whoever whoever among our slaves seek this guidance what's that surah 42 52 surah 42 verse 52 verse 52 okay it's in, the, in the spanish version is uh 42 verse 49 okay and uh, dice imam también de que eh, uno, en, entre las tareas asignadas a los profetas y a los mensajeros, te, o la cuarta tarea es la de la reformación y purificación del de alma de los individuos, de nosotros, de los seres humanos. Eh, y esto es una misión bien, 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 bien ardua, bien difícil. El primer, en primer lugar tenemos dos componentes, que es nuestro cuerpo material y el segundo componente de nuestro ser es el alma. O sea, así como el cuerpo necesita alimento y se nutre y de igual modo también la educamos, el alma necesita de esa nutrición, pero la nutrición que necesita el alma es una de educación y de purificación nos cita este imam, el sura número 42 del glorioso Corán ese es el capítulo 42 a la aleya número 52 en la versión eh, en inglés, en la versión castellana es en el sura número 48 en adelante. I had a call. Ah, tenemos un, una llamada Asalaamu Alaikum Buenas tardes. Buenas sí. tardes, sí, una pregunta que tengo para ustedes. Yeah, he's got a question. Sí, adelante, por favor. Sí, bueno, la pregunta es, eh, si Jesús cuando era adulterio, ¿por qué Mahoma tuvo cinco mujeres? Sí, Jesús, ¿cuál es la pregunta? ¿Puedes repetirla? ¿Hello? ¿Hello? Sí, dígame la pregunta nuevamente. Sí, si Jesús cuando era adulterio, ¿por qué Mahoma tuvo cinco mujeres? This is me with uh, if uh, Jesus condemned uh, with it, he uh, refused or he said that we should uh, walk away from adultery, why was uh, Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad, having them five wives? Um, thank you, brother, for this question. Um, if, you, if you read the, uh, the scriptures, even in the Torah and the Injil, the Bible, and Old Testament and the New Testament, we find that prophets in the past, many prophets, Solomon, David, and many prophets, they had multiple wives. So polygamy was well accepted in the previous religions. Uh, the fact that the prophets also had multiple wives, that does not make him an adulterer at all. This is permissible. This is perm in fact, certain exceptions were made to him, just as it was made to other prophets in the past. So if we were to say that uh, that the Prophet was an adulteress, which is we should not use this type of um, language, uh, we should have respect for all the Prophets, then we would be saying the same thing about David and the same thing about Solomon, who are also Prophets of Allah. So um, we should not make a distinction between the Prophets, they're all sent by God, and certain things are allowed for them, and they're not allowed for us. But polygamy is definitely something that is permissible in the religion of Islam. Pero no, 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 no comenzó su secta después que Cristo eh, cambió las leyes. Un momentito, no estamos conectando la pregunta. Ahora volvemos a donde usted para que primero traducirle la contestación para beneficio del público y luego que usted, eh, si desea, eh, desea ampliarla o, o, o emitir o hacer una nueva pregunta. Un momentito, por favor. El hermano Rashid está We're también. talking about wife and adultery. It doesn't make any sense. You know, this is just a bigger tree and, and, and the side of with all the respect on the side of the callers so you cannot have a wife to have a wife it's a legitimate uh, you know relationship that is approved by god so to call it uh, polygamy so you, you need uh, you know to to educate yourself about what the meaning of of adultery that's illegal uh, you know relationship that you have with your girlfriend that, that you're not supposed to or, or or mistress or something like that but to have a wife or that is uh, that is a uh, you know that is an institution in itself so this is not the topic uh, this is not the subject matter you can call us uh, when uh, offline when we're finished and we can continue we okay. are talking about prophet and messenger and i would like to to also to say after the creation of adam just one message has been repeatedly delivered to all mankind throughout history to remind people about it and to bring them back and that message was brought by Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus and Muhammad. My peace and blessing be upon all of them. For our dear listener, we respect all the prophets. So it is disrespectful to call a prophet adulterer. That's, that doesn't not befit a, a prophet who has the, the highest character. So as we see, Jesus, peace be upon him, said, 
here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. That can be found in Deuteronomy 6, 4. Also, throw to the Bible, and if you would like, I can quote many, many biblical references, that all the prophets teach there is only one God. There is only one God. Adam said, Moses said, Jesus said, uh, Muhammad said, all of them preach the same. The essence of the message is to teach humanity, to remind humanity that there is only one God. Worship Him and keep the commandments. That is the basic essence of, of, of you know, the summary of all the prophets. Hello. Colton. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, now they say... Está en la línea. Sí. No, deja la línea porque creo que tiene otra pregunta. Eh, la contestación al distinguido eh, eh, radio escucha es que si Jesús condenó al adulterio, ¿por qué el profeta Mahoma? Si el profeta Jesús condenó al adulterio, ¿por qué el profeta Mahoma tuvo entonces cinco mujeres? La contestación es primero que Dios selecciona como profetas y mensajeros a los seres humanos de más alto rango y mayor calidad. Cuando hablamos de esto, lo que queremos decir entonces es que en ningún momento podemos estar diciendo de que la poligamia era permitida y Dios no permitía que sus profetas fueran hombres que estuviesen incidiendo en ningún tipo de conducta que fuera pecaminosa entonces si la, poli la poligamia en ese sector del mundo, o sea tenemos que ver que es la parte del mundo en donde ellos habitaban, la poligamia era permitida porque había un alto número de incidencia de mortandad, o sea de mortalidad en, en el sexo masculino, había muchas guerras y las familias perdían a sus padres y a sus hijos varones y entonces tenían que otras familias eh, eh, hacerse cargo de esa familia y por eso era que se propiciaba la poligamia. Vemos que profetas también como lo fueron David y Salomón tuvieron más de una mujer, bastantes mujeres en Salomón se le acreditan sobre 800 en número y vemos que eso lo que estamos incidiendo es con un concepto que es la poligamia en ese sector del mundo no estamos hablando de adulterio eso sería hablar de adulterio sería estarle adjudicándole entonces una conducta pecaminosa y a los profetas eh, como siervos y mensajeros de Dios eh, Dios siempre selecciona lo más alta calidad hablamos de esposas y si hablamos de esposas y de adulterio en el caso de ellos eso no es sensato tenemos que educarnos sobre la selección de Dios y de sus profetas y eh, también después de la creación nos dice el hermano Rashid que eh, de la creación de Adán se ha repetido siempre el mismo mensaje que a través de todos los profetas, a través de Moisés, a través de Noé, a través de David y Salomón y de Jesús hasta el profeta Mahoma, que la paz de Dios sea con todos ellos siempre. Y es que eh, Jesús mismo le dijo, oye Israel, Dios es uno solo y debim, debemos estar sometidos a su sola voluntad y a su santa esencia. Hermano, ¿tiene alguna otra pregunta? Bueno, sí, porque ¿cuándo comenzó eh, eh, Mahoma? ¿Antes de Cristo o después de Cristo? Mahoma vino a la tierra en el 575 después de la venida de Jesús. Entonces, eso eso, 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 eso es en finales del siglo VI. ¿Por qué tiene que haber más profetas entonces? ¿Cómo dice? Jesús dijo, los profetas hasta Juan llegaron, Juan el Bautista, ahí se acabaron. Entonces, ¿por qué tenemos entonces otro profeta que viene con otra enseñanza de la poligamia como los, como los mormones? He says, okay, he says saying that Jesus had said that uh, the, the line, the prophetic line had finished when, uh, with the prophet John the Baptist. And uh, supposedly, why is it that there's a, a new prophet after the coming of Jesus? Well, to answer, uh, with the, all the respect, to answer that, you have to read also the Bible in, in Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. Go ahead and open your Bible and see what it says. And then we'll talk about it when Deuteronomy 18. There is a prophecy that foretold the Prophet Muhammad. All you need to do is to research it. We already did a show about it. Go to Rashid M. R A C H I D M. Space Muhammad in the Bible. And then we can talk about it. We can invite you here and we can talk about it. Now we're talking totally different subject and we shall continue. So, uh, you know, I mean, yes, uh, by, by the way, Prophet Muhammad and the, uh, Prophet Muhammad and the Quran spoke in great detail in very eloquent and very respectful way about Prophet Jesus and his mother. This is chapter 19 in the Quran. It's called Mary or Maryam. It's a beautiful, beautiful that talks about it in, in great detail. So I invite the caller 
to to get the Quran or if you can get it just come after the show and we'll provide one for you in Spanish and then that talks about uh, the progeny of of of, uh, of Jesus peace be upon him and we'll talk about his mother in great detail uh, Imam do you want to add something to that um, I think that answer sums it up uh, basically the Bible does foretell the coming of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and it's very clear and also as we know the um, we, as you mentioned, all of the prophets, their message is the same, and that's that's the main point we're trying to get everyone to understand. Their message was the same, <coughs> and if we're establishing that in the Bible it, it foretells the coming of Muhammad sallallahu then that should be sufficient for us. So, inshallah, let me give you just this this prophecy, this only one in Deuteronomy 18. Moses stated that God told him, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell them everything I command him. If anyone does not listen to my words, that the prophet speaks in my name, I myself will call him to account. This says can be found in the Bible, Deuteronomy 18, verses 18 through 19. So, okay. Uh, yeah, from the from these verses, we conclude that this prophet th that came after Moses and come after Jesus, he will be like Moses. The key word, like Moses, and also that he will be from the brothers of the Israelites. We know that uh, he, it's the Ishmaelites, and that God will put His word into the mouth of this prophet, and He will declare what God command him. So, if you examine this in great detail, you will find there is no other prophet so similar to Moses than, than, than Muhammad may peace be upon him and we can shed some more light if you would like like uh, you know Moses was born from a father and mother and uh, 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 Muhammad may peace and bless him was born from a father and mother Jesus in other hand was born miraculously from a virgin Mary so if you put uh, together you know uh, if you uh, put Muhammad uh, Jesus and Moses uh, hand by hand and you study the similarities and the similarities you found there is not a single uh, there is more in common between uh, Muhammad and, and uh, Moses and this prophecy talks specifically about the coming of Prophet uh, Muhammad and we do believe in Jesus so there is no need for us to discuss that. that's part of part and parcel of our belief si la Biblia, si los profetas eh, supuestamente acababan con Juan el Bautista, eh, según eh, adjudica él, eh, había manifestado Jesús porque otro profeta. Eh, hermano, ¿usted cree en la Biblia? Bueno, creo en la Biblia por el Galatas 1.8 y okay, uno le dice pero un momentito, Pablo, momentito, el cielo le voy a decir, se levanta le pregunto, un evangelio diferente. Le pregunto una cosa. El cielo viene un ángel con otro evangelio, no le escuche a Anatema. En, en Deuteronomio 18, eh, le dice específicamente, Deuteronomio 18, capítulo 18, de los versos 18 y 19, le dice, Y Jehová me dijo, y este es Moisés el que estaba hablando en Deuteronomio, eh, han hablado bien en lo que habían dicho, profeta les levantaré de en medio de sus hermanos como tú un profeta como Moisés y pondré mis palabras en su boca o sea que el profeta no va a hablar como habló Jesús que dijo y pronosticó y hablaba los evangelios con gran elocuencia y con gran sabiduría y él les hablará mis palabras después de ponérselas en su boca y dirá todo lo que yo le mandaré mas a cualquiera que no oyere mis palabras que él hablare en mi nombre yo le pediré cuenta entonces, ¿qué pasa? Aquí tenemos tres cosas. Tenemos en primer lugar un profeta como Moisés. Tenemos un profeta que va a ser no israelita, sino de los hermanos de los israelitas, que son los ismaelitas, que son los árabes. Y lo otro es que Dios le va a estar colocando las palabras en su boca, en la boca de este profeta, de manera de que éste hable con elocuencia, pero va a hablar con elocuencia lo que Dios le mandare. Este profeta, hermano, inclusive en la versión hebrea de la Biblia, dice Jesús, cuando Jesús está hablando, cuando él nos manifiesta que la traducción se ha cambiado a, de paracleto, se ha, se ha cambiado a mensajero, en la versión hebrea habla claramente que Jesús dice, después de mí vendrá Mohammedin, Mohammedin es el profeta Mohammed y lo menciona Jesús por su propio nombre. 
Si creemos entonces en Dios y creemos en sus profetas y en sus mensajeros, entonces tenemos que creer en el mensaje de ellos. Nosotros en el Islam lo que pasa es que no somos selectivos y nosotros creemos en lo que todos los profetas han dicho, porque Dios es quien selecciona a los profetas, no somos nosotros los que los seleccionamos. Y si Dios dijo que iba a enviar un profeta, después de, de Moisés, después de Jesús, y ese profeta iba a hablar el mensaje de Dios, y usted ve que el Corán, usted ha, se, se han familiarizado con el Corán, el Corán le da a usted mucha información, que usted tiene la Biblia, pero mucho más amplia. Le habla del faraón, por ejemplo, de los tiempos de Moisés, pero no, le da hasta el nombre del ayudante del faraón, que no aparece en ningún sitio en la Biblia. Eh, Mahoma, seis siglos más tarde que Jesús, de ninguna manera Mahoma podía tener ese conocimiento, si ese conocimiento no le hubiese sido brindado a través de Dios. Bueno, hermano, gracias por su participación. ¿Tiene alguna otra pregunta? Bueno, sí, lo que yo me refiero es porque entonces los mamones también, porque vino un ángel, le enseñó otro evangelio también, eh, todo lo que... para practicar la, la poligamia. Acuérdese, acuérdese que no es todo el mundo, o sea, nosotros sí, sí. tenemos que, que seguir los profetas que Dios seleccionó, no el que se selecciona así mismo como profeta. Y nosotros estamos en la misma línea que usted, o sea, estamos en los tiempos, nosotros somos religiones todas abrámicas. No quiero entrar a debatir sobre nada que tenga que ver sobre otra religión como la religión mormona, porque no sería justo si no tuviéramos un representante de los mormones que pudiera defenderla aquí. Pero gracias por su participación de todas maneras, hermano. Thank you. Thank you. Muy We have tardes. to continue with the, our subject. Tenemos que continuar con el after, tema after de hoy. Finish and, uh, you know, we'll discuss more Muchas more. gracias. Adelante, Imam, por favor. Imam, so we continue with the job number four. We said the prophets were sent to reform us and to purify our souls. Um, another evidence mentioned in the Quran that proves this, Allah mentions in Surah number 2, verse number 257, Allah says, Allah This verse, Allah says that Allah is the wali, the protector or the guardian of those who believe. He brings them out from darkness into light. Now this verse is telling us basically that even though today we may have our you know our uh, our nutrition we have our three four meals for the day you know we have homes to live in we have shelter we have security we have safety you know we have all the material things that's not happiness that's not ultimate happiness we can still be in darkness even though we have all these material things even though we have the best of technology we can still be in darkness But the light that Allah is talking about in this verse is the light of Iman, the light of belief, the light of revelation, believing in the revelation that was sent down by all of the prophets. And this is verse number verse 257, surah number 2. Okay. So this is one verse. Also in surah number 22, verse number 46, in yet another verse, Allah is describing the misguidance that he's talking about he says فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبَصَارُ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورُ Allah says that verily it is not the eyes that go that go blind meaning it's not the eyes that go blind but it is the hearts which are in the breasts of men that will go blind meaning the spiritual guidance is very necessary is needed If we don't have that spiritual guidance, then we are basically blind. We're blind, we will not be able to comprehend the reality of life. So that is Surah number 22, verse number 46. 22, verse 46. Uh, okay. Let me find it in here first. Okay, nos está hablando Ibn primero de el... De la, de la segunda, de la, de la misión que nos está, le estamos dando a los profetas eh, por parte de ese Padre Amado, por parte de Dios Todopoderoso y eh, nos, dice, nos dice él también de que en el Sura número 2 a la ley ya número 257 Sura número 2, a la ley ya número 257, en la versión en castellano del glorioso Corán es el Sura 2 a la ley ya 256 dice, Alá es amigo de los que creen, los saca de las tinieblas a la luz pero los incrédulos tienen como amigos a los taguts que los sacan de la luz a las tinieblas y esos son los compañeros del fuego donde serán estos inmortales, hermano Rashid Inshallah, we're gonna play that verse, Inshallah uh -huh. So, uh, Surat 2 uh, uh, to 56, inshallah, we're going to play the song. 57. 2 to 57, inshallah. Mm -hmm. So, this is a beautiful verse. Actually, there was a, an imam, an American. Uh, online. I had a, uh, another call, the, the lady, for the question. Yeah, that's fine, inshallah. Okay. 
Go ahead. Yeah, that's okay. fine. We can uh, take the call and we can play it. Uh, that's Adelante, muy buenas tardes. Radio Escucha. ¿En qué le podemos servir? Mm, sí, buenas tardes. Bendiciones para todos. Muchas bendiciones para todos. Una pregunta um, que requiere dos respuestas. Un favor. Primero, ¿cuál es la promesa? Esa es la primera. Y la segunda, ¿qué? Eh, ¿Quién lo dijo? ¿Mahoma o el Padre Celestial? ¿Cuál es la promesa que tiene para, para, para ustedes de su religión? Esa es la pregunta para ustedes. ¿Cuál es la premisa? La pregunta es, tengo entendido que, pero no, no sé si fue Mahoma o el Padre Celestial, eso es lo que yo quisiera saber, ¿quién de los dos? ¿Quién de los dos? La promesa que tiene para ustedes cuando, bueno, ya mudamos todos y y según el juicio y todo esto tengo entendido que hay una promesa para, para gente del Islam pero no sé si estoy equivocada me lo habían equivocado y, y me gustaría saber porque ustedes están dentro de esa religión y me gustaría saber cuál es la promesa que el padre se... bueno, no sé si Mahoma lo dijo o Mohamed ¿Cuál es la promesa que Dios tiene para, para sí, pues. los musulmanes? y la segunda parte de su pregunta señora, ¿cuál era? Te dice que tenía dos preguntas. ¿Quién, quién, ¿Quién, ¿quién la hizo? ¿Quién lo dijo? ¿Mahoma o el Padre Celestial? La promesa que tiene para ustedes, para su religión. Tengo entendido, sácame del error. Okay. Alguien me comentó que al final, eh, que cuando mueran, los hombres van a tener 72 mujeres. Y yo quiero saber si eso es realmente cierto y por qué nada más para los hombres y, y entonces qué pasa con las mujeres. Eso no es Aunque ya no vamos a hacer de carne y sangre, en la vida. lo que vamos a hacer en espíritu. Pero la... me gustaría saber si es cierto, eh, qué fundamento tiene, si es realmente, si lo dijo Mahoma, lo permitió Mahoma o lo permitió para el celestial. Okay, entonces tú estás haciendo, tú estás haciendo dos preguntas y estás haciendo referencia a una promesa de tener 72 mujeres después de que lleguen al paraíso y habla de los varones. She has a two prone question, uh, but she gave us a partial answer there as well. Uh, she's saying that, that what, which one is the promise that was given to Muslims and who said it? And she is making reference as to what the promise is. She's talking about some uh, sort of uh, 72 ladies that are promised once you are in, uh, in heaven, once you are in paradise. Mm -hmm. I think you go crazy in this life just with one uh, wife. <laughs> can, can you imagine so, 72? Well, let's go. Uh, give me an answer, please, so that I can respond to the lady. What? What? What's she's, the she's talking about? What is the promise that was given to to the Muslims? And she said, she says, who who made this promise? Was Prophet Muhammad the one who made the promise, or was it Allah? Was it God? And she's talking what about so this is so ladies. this is so vague. What, what do you mean promise? I mean, as you live when you are a Muslim, and that's the, for all the prophets. They came mm -hmm. here to save humanity and to be admitted in paradise. That is the goal. The goal is to worship God uh, the way he wants to be worshipped, not the way we like to be, the way he instructs us to worship him. And uh, by uh, so the, in hope that we will be admitted into his paradise by his mercy, not by our work, not by, by his mercy. We still have to work and we still, but he, uh, his mercy encompasses all, all, uh, all and everything. So that's the promise that Jesus uh, promised his, his followers, Moses promised his followers, uh, all the prophets promised th their followers the same thing. You know what I mean? Know that you are in this life temporarily, you have to endure everything, you have to be patient, you have to believe in God, you have to follow the commandment so that you may earn the pleasure of Allah. By earning the pleasure of Allah, you may be admitted to paradise with uh, with god permission and with uh, with the god mercy so that is the ultimate goal i uh, that's that's basically it and in paradise there is no eyes has ever seen no ear has ever heard or no mind have ever think of anything you think of in this life cannot be compared to paradise because there is the light in it and everything in it for male and female it's far exceeding to anything we can think of we can sit here and imagine but our imagination comes short because our mind is so limited and uh, and paradise is infinite for here for this life 
God give it to to the believer and disbeliever. There's people that dis choose to disbelieve in God and they still enjoy this life. But paradise, only the good, only the pure, only the believe in Him will be admitted to paradise. And hellfire, in other hand, my God, save us from us, is created for the rebellious, is created for troublemakers, is created for the people who cause disharmony among among uh, among mankind. And that shortly sum up that. So we're gonna we're, we're gonna have to continue with the back to our. Is, is there any section in the Quran that makes reference to any seventy-two ladies? I don't know no, any any way that, that mentions is, anything like that. So okay. that is far from our subject. So but, we, but we but stay to our subject, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Para la distinguida. Eh, Radio Escucha, la contestación a su pregunta, ella estaba preguntando primero cuál es la premisa o la promesa que de, tienen supuestamente para nosotros, para los musulmanes. Debemos no solamente incluirnos nosotros, yo diría que es para todos los creyentes. I'm telling them that it's not only, that's a promise not only for Muslims, but for all believers. And uh, the, uh, you have to believe in, in Allah. You have to believe in all the prophets. You have to believe in the scriptures. You have to believe in the revelation. You have to be believe in the final judgment, and uh, uh, you have to be believe in all the prophets and messengers of Allah, all the prophets and messengers of God. Eh, le estamos diciendo de que todo usted, eh, todos los profetas vinieron para salvar a la humanidad, hermanos, y seremos admitidos al paraíso por la misericordia de Dios, Dios Padre Todopoderoso, única y exclusivamente, no de ninguno de los profetas ni mensajeros. Eh, Jesús, Moisés, Mahoma, todos profetas y mensajeros. Que la, y que la paz de Dios sea con ellos siempre todos siempre nos, dije, nos dijeron y nos inculcaron de que nosotros como seres vivos estamos atravesando una experiencia temporal y terrenal y tenemos que seguir a los profetas y mensajeros que la paz de Dios sea con ellos siempre tenemos que creer en Dios y en sus ángeles en las revelaciones hechas por Dios tanto en el Torah, tanto en la Biblia y siempre y cuando que no haya ese, aquella inculcación de, del, del toque terrenal, el toque que le dio el imperio romano algunas secciones del Nuevo Testamento, la revelación en el día del juicio final, queridos hermanos. Si nosotros creemos en todos, en su revelación, creemos en todos sus profetas y en todos sus mensajeros, nosotros seguimos el mensaje de Dios. Nos dice Imam eh, Abdul y nos dice también el hermano Rashid que no tienen conocimiento de ninguna sección en el Corán en donde hay una promesa de 72 mujeres. Yo de mi parte le inculco que si en esta vida con una sola nos, nos enloquecemos, con 72 no podemos tener el control de la situación la perderíamos por completo pero esto es meramente es un comentario mío personal eh, Imam Yusakuwa la Jujera So the job number number five the fifth job or responsibility of prophets and remember again we're discussing the responsibility and the jobs of the prophets all prophets we're not being specific here about any one prophet all prophets so number five their job is also to correct the deviant ideas and beliefs to correct deviant ideas or beliefs Uh, why do we mention correct? Because we believe as Muslims that in the beginning people were of sound nature, meaning they were people upon Tawheed, people upon the worship of Allah alone. They were monotheistic, you know, worshippers, they will not associate any problems with Allah at that time. But as time went along, as time went along, as mentioned, you know, in our scriptures and in our text, as time went along, Satan whispered to them and Satan caused them to deviate from the monotheism caused them to deviate from worshiping Allah alone and so they started ascribing partners with Allah in all different forms and different shapes so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent these prophets and messengers to guide mankind back to the truth now it sounds very very you know like you know stating the obvious oh we're preaching one God one God what is so important about one God Yes, it is very simple, very simple, yet a lot of us have not accepted the idea of having one God, meaning worshipping Him alone. He is the sole creator, He is the one that gives life, He takes life. He is the one to whom we will all return. He is the one that when we're in dire need, we're going to call upon Him. He is the one that if we were lost in a ship and you know we were caught in a storm, we would call upon Him alone. At that time, you will not ascribe any partners with him. You will call, up, call upon him alone. He's the one when there's no one else to turn to, he's the one that you'll turn to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So their job was to correct these, these uh, you know, misguided thoughts and, and, and ideas. And again, these ideas that you know, a lot of us have, like one of the prevalent ones, 
ones today is that you know the idea of Trinity, of believing in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. This is also a, um, a, an idea that was invented, and it's not the original teachings that God has sent to mankind. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi one of his jobs and his responsibilities was to clear this up, and Allah cleared it up very specifically in the Quran. He mentioned in many verses that Allah is not three; Allah is one. He is one. And he mentioned very clearly that Jesus is not the Son of God, nor is He God. He is a messenger of Allah, just like all the other messengers. That Jesus prays to Allah, Muhammad prays to Allah, Musa prays to Allah. They all pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is inshallah the, the, you know, the fifth responsibility. They have to clay up the, you know, the, the, um, the deviant ideas and beliefs that man may have. And man may have accumulated after time. So may Allah bless you, uh, Imam. Uh, uh, just one quote that uh, Jesus never claimed divinity, never claimed Trinity. This is all were invented way, way after in the Council of Nicaea. So just one verse can confirm what the what the Imam says is Mark, Mark, in the Bible, Mark 12, and verse 29 through 34. Mark 12, verse 29 through 34, which states, Jesus answered him the, someone asked uh, the question to jesus and jesus answered him the first of all commandments is here o israel the lord our god is one lord and jesus answered him the first of all commandments is here o israel the lord our god is one lord we can give so many so many references in the bible in the quran in the Torah, the confirm what I saw the uh, while Jesus is looking for that Mark 12:29. We also would like our audience to take into consideration the fact, the fact of of that that God cannot be born. God cannot be born. That God did not come into existence. He's always existed. So we have to consider this. None, no one created him and he was not born. He does not give birth. No one give birth to him. So we cannot attribute human nature to God. Uh, did you find it, uh, Dr. Jesus? Can you go ahead and translate? Oh, yes, I have the uh, Bible here. Yeah, go ahead. Of course. My pleasure. Eh, primero que nada, pues, él nos está hablando de las responsabilidades y los trabajos y de, de los profetas y mensajeros. El, es el, estamos hablando de cuáles son las ideas eh, co corregir el, una de las asignaciones que, que tienen los profetas y mensajeros es corregir las ideas desviadas y las creencias desviadas eh, nosotros creemos que las personas en un principio o sea que la humanidad en un principio era tenía una naturaleza eh, muy 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 correcta en el sentido de que iba orientada hacia el monoteísmo siempre al monoteísmo puro Satanás por su parte les habló y se les siguieron asociando lo que que llamamos como el Shaitán, les habló y se, se siguieron asociando y adjudicando dioses y semidioses al lado de Dios. Dios es uno solo, hermanos. Dios es el solo creador. A Él solamente vamos a regresar. No vamos a regresar a ninguno otro. No vamos a regresar eh, a, 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 a ningún intermediario. Vamos a regresar al Padre amado ante su santa presencia. Cuando estamos en zozobra y en necesidad es a él a quien debemos llamar, es a él a quien suplicamos y es a él a quien siempre debemos suplicar en todas nuestras oraciones y en quien debemos orar y con quien debemos conversar directamente con él y sin intermediarios el trabajo del profeta Mahoma que la paz de Dios sea con él siempre y con todos los profetas, entre otros fue clarificar que solo existe Allah que solo existe un solo Dios subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala y clarificar las ideas desviadas e incorrectas por otra parte también pues citamos de la Biblia, el libro de eh, Marcos, el apóstol Marcos, eh, en el capítulo número 12, de los versos 29 al 34, y citamos de la Biblia, eh, Jesús acercándose a uno de los escribas que los había oído disputar y sabía que, que les había respondido bien, le preguntó, ¿cuál es el primer mandamiento de todos? Y Jesús le respondió, el primer mandamiento de todos es, oye Israel, el Señor nuestro Dios es el Señor uno y único exclusivamente y amarás al Señor tu Dios con todo tu corazón, con toda tu alma con toda tu mente y con todas tus fuerzas este es el principal mandamiento y el segundo es semejante, amarás a tu prójimo como a ti mismo, no hay otro mayor mandamiento que este entonces el escriba le dijo, bien maestro verdad has dicho que uno es Dios y no hay otro fuera de él, 
y el amarle con todo el corazón, con todo el entendimiento, con todo el alma y con todas las fuerzas y amar al prójimo como uno mismo es más que todos los holocaustos y sacrificios. Jesús entonces, viendo que había respondido sabiamente, le dijo, no estás lejos del reino de Dios y ya ninguno osaba preguntarle. Esto es conocimiento para que el que quiera escuchar, pues que lo nutra. Uh, Imam, you say uh, Allahu Akbar, or Brother Rashid? Yeah, with your permission, Imam. Uh, also, we we have to consider that uh, Jesus, my peace be upon him, was born, and we say that God cannot be born, and also Jesus, my peace be upon him, was in his mother's womb, Mary, for nine months, and he was born. So, by its very nature, that he does not have the same quality and characteristic to God. We cannot say that he is human and God at the same time. That doesn't make any sense. God cannot be born, and we know that Jesus was born miraculously from the Virgin Mary. No more miracle than the creation of Adam. Uh, God says in the Quran, he draws a parallel between the similitude of Jesus and the similitude of Adam. God, the power who created Adam out of nothingness, out of dust, is able to create Jesus, my peace be upon him, miraculously from the Virgin Mary. So just this can, uh, you know, and there is many, many other, you know, uh, uh, other references. We did a show about uh, there is no original sin, so you can check that out. It's Rashid M. That's blastpark.com. You can just put Rashid M. space original sin or Rashid M. space uh, Muhammad in the Bible and we uh, the two callers we discuss this in detail we're gonna go back uh, after uh, Jesus Marty we're gonna go back to Imam and uh, I apologize Imam for for uh, no problem for taking the sure. time to know nos dice el man Rashid de que Jesús fue nacido por una parte y estuvo en el vientre de su madre la Virgen María por nueve meses hermanos Dios no nace Dios no es engendrado ni se engendra tampoco Dios no viene de ninguna mujer Dios ninguna mujer puede darle luz a Dios no le podemos decir que María es madre de Dios porque Dios ha existido y existe antes y existirá por los siglos de los siglos amén eh, hablamos sobre la no existencia también del pecado original y que en lo que en contrario en lugar de que nazcan las personas con un pecado original nacen con un perdón lo que se conoce como el perdón original eh, vemos entonces que Dios en toda su misericordia su acuérdense que Dios es, tiene su rahman esa, esa misericordia que Dios le da a la humanidad Dios nos da también ese perdón Dios nos nutre y nos da su sustento hermanos y te debemos vivir siempre agradecidos de ese padre amado imam yusakubalajuheram Um, also, and again, remember we're on point number five, and that is we're discussing the, one of the responsibilities of the prophets, and we said that among their responsibilities and their jobs is that they're supposed to correct the deviant ideas and beliefs. Allah mentions in the Quran also in Surah number two, verse number 213, Surah number two, verse number 213, Allah says, كان الناس أمة واحدة فبعث الله فبعث الله النبيين مبشرين ومنذرين. Allah says that mankind were one community, one community meaning they were all upon monotheism. فبعث الله النبيين. So Allah subhanahu wa taala at that point when they deviated and they strayed from that that unity upon Tawheed and the oneness of Allah, Allah sent the prophets. To give glad tidings and also to warn them. Now we know that this is the job of the prophets. They're you know if something goes wrong with the people, they start going uh, going away from the straight path. He's going to send prophets to to bring them back to that straight path. Let's take an uh, take a look at at the life of Noah. Nuh alayhislam. Noah. He denounced his people. He denounced his people for worshiping idols. The same as Prophet Ibrahim. Abraham. He denounced his people for worshiping idols and believing in the sun and the moon and so on. Right? Prophet Hud, he denounced his people for their arrogance and tyranny in the land. Prophet Saleh, he denounced uh, his people for the corruption in the land, that, that they, were, they, was, they were just being corrupt. And a lot of corruption was taking place, so his job was to come and clear that up. Prophet Lut, Lut or Lot, he fought against the sin of, of sodomy, which was widespread among his people. Uh, prophet Shu'aib, another prophet, he fought against his people's practice of cheating and weighing in, in, in terms of the ways and the measures. So meaning when they were about to weigh something, if you had to buy like flour or rice and they were weighing it, they would cheat, they would you know, rig the scales. So these prophets, their jobs were to come and to clay up whatever misconception, whatever misguidance is taking place on the land. And 
as we mentioned, one of the responsibilities of the Prophet Sallallahu is to clear up this idea of Tathlith, the idea of the Trinity, the idea that Jesus is, 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 um, is more than a prophet. He came to clear up this message and Allah sent him for that reason and so he revealed the Quran. Okay, let me uh, begin with uh, uh, Surah number 2, <laughs> the ayah number 213. Nos dice Imam de que en primer lugar, el en el Surah número 2, la ley número 213, tenemos que tener presente de que los profetas vienen a corregir las ideas desviadas y las creencias desviadas. ¿Qué ocurre, hermanos? En el, en el, en el Surah eh, número 2, la ley número 211, la vez, versión en español, en castellano, y citamos del sagrado libro del Corán, del glorioso Corán, los hombres eran una única comunidad y Allah le envió a los profetas como portadores de nu buenas nuevas y advertidores e hizo descender el libro con la verdad para que fuera un juicio entre los hombres sobre aquello en lo que discrepaban pero no fue sino después de tener las pruebas claras cuando aquellos que lo habían recibido discreparon sobre él por envidias de unos con otros y a la guió a los que creían a la verdad de la que discrepaban con su permiso y a la guía a quien quiere al camino recto You wanna no, no, go ahead, continue. Okay. Exactly. Do you have the, uh, the denouncements? Do you have the list of the denouncements from the different prophets um, over there? Or I can mention it, then you can translate it. <laughs> Please. Okay. okay, like we mentioned uh, Noah, okay. Noah, mm -hmm. Noah, he came and he came to denounce his people's uh, worship of idols. They were worshiping idols. Okay. And then we have Abraham. Abraham came to do the exact same thing. His people were worshiping idols. They were praying to the sun and to the moon and so on. Okay. So Abraham's job was to clear that up. Um, Hood, Prophet Hood, came to denounce the arrogance of his people. They were very arrogant and, and they were tyrants, basically. Okay. Prophet Saleh, he came to denounce the corruption that was among his people. They were corrupted. Um, Prophet Lut, a lot, he came to denounce the sin of sodomy and basically homosexuality. And he came to denounce that and it was widespread among his people. So Allah sent him to clear that up to them, tell them that that was wrong. Prophet, uh, also we also mentioned um, Shu'aib, Prophet Shu'aib, he came and his people were rigging the scales, meaning they were cheating one another. They were cheating one another. They would, you know, rob, the, rob if they had to buy and sell, they would, they were not trading fairly. They would um, have the, sale, the, the scales that were used, have it rigged. So these are just examples of uh, the, some of the prophets that were sent and their jobs and responsibilities. But nowadays, it, he will be very busy because we have so many oh. practices <laughs> and corruption today. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. oh, oh, okay, gracias. Nos dice el, el eh, imam de que, en primer lugar, sobre estas prácticas de, de, de desviadas, estas ideas desviadas y creencias desviadas, este, los profetas vinieron a denunciar diferentes prácticas de, de sus comunidades. En primer lugar, pues el profeta este, Noé eh, denunció la adoración de ídolos. Por su parte, Ibrahim, que es Abraham, denunció a su gente por estar también adorando ídoles, a ídolos y, y adorando a la luna. Eh, el profeta Lot este, denunció las prácticas de sodomía dentro de su época. El profeta Hud uh, denunció la arrogancia. El profeta Solet denunció también la corrupción entre su gente. Y el profeta Shaib Shaib, Shaib denunció el uso de balanzas adulteradas y la comisión de fraude en las prácticas de comercio dentro del público en, 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 su, en, su, en su época. Vemos que todo este tipo de, de ideas desviadas y formas de, de lidiar desviadamente pues son prácticas indeseables y contra las cuales siempre Allah, Dios Padre Todopoderoso, se ha manifestado y deben ser siempre corregidas. Ah, Imam, yo saco la Jujeram. Tenemos cinco minutitos todavía. The last proofs that we're going to mention and inshallah this will conclude the, um, the topic of the jobs okay. of the prophets uh, number six their job was also to establish the proofs establish the proof meaning establishing the proof means that on the day of judgment on the day of judgment when everyone is resurrected Allah doesn't want anyone to say that they didn't know they didn't know what their responsibility was Allah doesn't want anyone to say about I didn't know I was supposed to worship you oh Allah I thought you know I could just live my life Allah doesn't want that. So because of that, He sends the prophets. Because it's not just about establishing the proof, but for some people, they don't want to. They don't want guidance. They don't want to, to better them, their, their, themselves. They don't want to be told what is right and what is wrong. They just want to do whatever they feel like doing, regardless of who it hurts and so on. 
So for these people, Allah has sent prophets and messengers to establish the proof against them. So on the day of judgment, when he passes his judgment, no one can say, I didn't know. So he mentions in surah number 4, Allah mentions in surah number 4, verse 165, he says, لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى اللَّهِ حُجَّةٌ بَعْدَ الرُّسُلِ Allah says that we have sent messengers as, as bearers of good news as well, of, as well as warners of what will come. And the reason why, he says, so that they will have no excuse. They will have no excuse to say they didn't know. Okay, el, el, también los profetas son enviados para establecer pruebas en el día de juicio final. Nadie puede decir que no sabía a quién tenía que adorar el grueso de nosotros. Rehusamos escuchar y no queremos señalamientos en ese sentido. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nos dice en el sura número 4, a la a ley número eh, 165 en español, que dice eh, mensajeros portadores de buenas noticias y de advertencias para que así los hombres después de su venida no tuvieran ningún argumento frente a Allah. Allah es poderoso y sabio. El, ¿Cuánto tiempo más tenemos? Un minuto adicional el, Ya vemos hermanos entonces De que esa es, es una manera de estar estableciendo Esas pruebas y esto aparece en el Sagrado Libro del Corán Al Sura 4, a la ley 1.64 ah, Imam Yusaku Wala Jujeram Thank you very much and we pray and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala By his most beautiful names and attributes To guide us to the truth Show us what is correct, help us to follow it And help us to turn away from that which is wrong Jazakallah khairan shukran Pedimos y suplicamos